Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to go to the internet and retrieve the source code of a given web page. So let's look at one web page. For example, here I have uh, Wikipedia. I, I just queried something, and this is the source code of this, right? So this is Wikipedia source code. You could put any URL you want, and there will be source code. But this is an easy way to query. Um, an easy way to put a, a URL address and what it returns is just this text. You can imagine if you put any web page here, so for example um, google.com, right? Whatever is returned here has some code in the background. You can right click and say view page source and that's the source of this web page. Now the web page that I had brought with Wikipedia actually is is a way to read Wikipedia from an application and this is actually the source but any source will do we'll, the, the idea here is just we're gonna go online and bring back whatever uh, whatever is, re is uh, given to us by the server of this URL in this case enwikipedia.org okay so uh, the app will work a little bit like this let me, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. So here's, here's the application. There will be this fetch button that I will click and it will bring back the source code of whatever application we have. Let's build this. So here we're in Android Studio. We have basically an activity. We've designed it like this where there is basically a text at a text view here and a button here. If we go to the XML for this, the text says click the button to see the source code and the ID of the text is text from web. And the button, the text there says fetch, and the onclick method is fetch, meaning in my activity, the fetch, I will have to create a fetch method that will actually retrieve or will actually uh, start the actions to retrieve the content of whatever web page I want. So let's go to my Wikipedia search and, and remember this is how it looks like. That's all I have. Let's go to my Wikipedia search here and this is a, a typical activity with the onCreate. I just added a text view called source src and then I bound it to the actual text from web XML element, right? So I bound it to the vi to the to the um, to the visual element of a text view. Now, before we go and code the fetch uh, method, which must receive a view, right? What we're going to do is I'm going to code. I'm going to create an inner class. You could create this in an external class file. That's that's totally fine. I'm just going to do it in an inner class. This class is going to go and fetch the, the source code from a web page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a downloader. Now the key here is that this will extend an, an async task. Okay, Async task is a way to actually perform things asynchronously. So basically my application doesn't have to wait until I bring back the code. I can still click buttons, tap buttons, and move stuff around while the application is going online and bringing back the code. In an async task, I need to tell it what are the parameters that I'm going to give it. For example, if it's a URL, I'm going to give it a string. What are the parameters that I'm going to return? Well, because I'm going to return the source code of the web page, I'm going to return a string. And then the parameters that it needs to track the progress. I'm not going to track the progress here, so it's void. The object void, not the primitive. Okay? So I have my async task. And then the async task, I must override the method. Uh, I must override, I'm sorry, I must override the method to in background. Okay? This has the following signature, public, and then this type must be the same as this type. Public string, doing background, and then this type, I'm sorry, this type must be the same as this type, the result. This type here must be the same as this type. 
in this case both are strings so you can see the difference so you do string dot 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 urls which means you can pass as many urls as you want and urls will become an array so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a result which is going to contain the source code I'm going to set it to null and I will return it but of course in the meantime I need to do something I need to go online I need to go online establish a connection to that URL so I'm going to create a URL object with the first URL passed in the parameters I'm just going to assume you pass only one URL so I'm just going to get remember because this is an array um, I'm going to extract the first URL you pass, which hopefully will be the only one in this example. Then I'm going to establish an HTTP URL connection by doing URL open connection and casting that to an HTTP URL connection. And from this connection, I can get an input stream. If, I, if there's any exception, I'm just going to log the error. And now the other thing that I'm going to do now is with this connection, I can establish a buffer reader, right? With that connection in okay I can create a buffer reader and then I'm just gonna read line by line and I will add the line to the result at the end I'm gonna disconnect okay I'm gonna close the connection and like I said I'm going to return the result so this uh, downloader that extends as async task and overwrites the doing background method at some point is going to the web getting the you uh, going to the web given a URL and retrieving all its contents and it'll return that result now the async task has several methods okay to to work and this time we're going to work with it look at what we're going to do on the fetch method now remember this class is downloader I'm going to create an instance of a downloader D it's going to be a new downloader and then I'm going to say d.execute with whatever URL I want. Okay, in this case, it's the same URL that you saw in my web browser. Okay, so d.execute with that URL. And what's going to happen is that this execute at some point is going to call the doing background method and it's going to run the result and it's going to save the result somewhere in the class. It's going to save this result somewhere. The way I get that result is by doing my downloader dot get this will get the result and I'm gonna set it to the source remember the source is this text view right I'm gonna set the text of the text view to that source if there's an exception well I'm gonna say you know error in thread or something like that so let's run this application I'm gonna run this application and you will see it working hopefully so I'm gonna run it in that emulator so you guys can see it and there it is if I click fetch there it is this is the whole the whole uh, text from that uh, web page and this is how you read um, this is how you read text from a web page note that this class here can actually be in any in any other Java file you could have created a new Java file and do this class over there now there's another way to do this too the async task also has another method that you could override which will be called after after the task is finished and that is the unpost execute okay this parameter here must be the same parameter as uh, this one here okay the result and what I'm gonna do is unpost execute I'm gonna set the text of this text box to result so what I will do here is forget about this try and catch in the fetch view, I'm going to call the downloader. I'm going to call the execute method, and the execute method will act, will code a lot of methods. We'll call the doing background, and as soon as the doing background is finished, it'll call the unpost execute. Notice now that my class downloader is accessing source, which is the variable in this class, in the outer class. When I do it this way. I need to have this class inside the activity that is using it because I'm accessing one of its methods. So let's see it working this way. Let's run it and see what happens. 
So let's see. Gradle's still building. Sorry, my computer is slow. But notice this different. With the previous method, you could have this downloader be a separate class and you can reuse it. With this method that I'm doing right now, the downloader must be included in the activity because I am using member variables of the activity. So let's launch this in the second method now. Whoops. And let's see what happens. And there it is, very slow, but if I click fetch, there's the text. And that is how you would go to the web and fetch code from a web page. You have two ways, this way with the unpost execute, or the other way. Without the unpost execute, where this can be a separate class, but then you use the d.get after you have executed the downloader or whatever the async task. Thanks for listening.